Hello and welcome back to Digital Assets Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in your corner of the world. Ripple CEO says the firm could go public once the SEC case is resolved. So the only stumbling block is the firm's legal bout with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. And there will be a little more discussion about that shortly. So Garlinghouse made this known during a Wednesday talk at the Consensus by Coindesk on 2021 conference. And the CEO was asked whether Ripple would become a public company, to which he replied that the likelihood is very high at some point. And this is not the first time Ripple's intended IPO plans would be reported. Garlinghouse first floated the idea in January of 2020 when he said he expected to see many IPOs in the crypto space in the coming months. And also, too, as a refresher, last month, one of Ripple's largest shareholders, Yoshitaki Katao, Japan's SBI Group CEO, also revealed Ripple's intention to go public once the SEC lawsuit is resolved on an earnings call. And the new cent XRP surging 14% and trading at 161 at the time. Obviously, we're down just a bit for the moment, but we will be climbing up very soon. So... I think moving forward, going to discussion of the SEC attorney moving to withdraw from the Ripple case. So let's, you know, let's share a little bit about that because Dugan Bliss, the senior trial counsel at the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, is seeking the court's permission to withdraw from the Ripple case, and the attorney says that he's leaving the agency after spending over 10 years there. So after Bliss's departure, the SEC will be represented by the remaining counsel, George G. Tenrero and Daphne A. Waxman, John A. Daniels, and others. But the litigation process is being supervised by SEC attorney Preeti Krishnamurthy. And the Ripple case is still in its pre-trial discovery phase, as reported by you today. The SEC is now seeking to expand the number of depositions. So I think, again, it's just showing a lot of, uh, what do you want to say right there, cloudiness, I guess you could say, in regards to this case. But I think soon we will have clarity and everyone will be able to see. Also, to RippleX launches a grants program for projects on the XRPL. And the uh, grants program will focus on NFT's core infrastructure developing tooling, developer UX, and security. Now, the team encouraged projects focused on NFTs for the first round of grant applications. And there's a June 10th deadline for the first round and successful applicants will be teamed up with mentors but the team at ripple x has announced the launch of a community grants program aimed at funding the projects that are built on the xrp ledger the ripple x grants program is looking for open source projects that advance the growing community around the xrp ledger and again showing more use case again an expansion within the XRPL. So the more use case it has, obviously the more uh, liquidity can continue to move through that uh, XRP ledger. Also too, Zenfin brings solutions for Ethereum's slow transaction speed. And if you've used Ethereum for the past few years, you understand how slow and as expensive as it is to use the Ethereum for its gas fees. But Zenfin serves as an alternate solution for Ethereum's slow transaction speeds, and Zenfin could support up to 2,000 transactions per second, the TPS. XDC network is best compared to ETH XRP and many more. Although we've discussed a little bit more depth and accuracy on its actual focus and use case. And again, I still don't see either of those as so much a competitor, but as more so like a interoperable group that can integrate it within the blockchains, both being green assets, both being very fast, both being very efficient and both having like low energy consumption. So, Zenfin 
uh, serving as an alternate solution for Ethereum's slow transaction speed. Though many crypto fans see Ethereum as the leading altcoin next to Bitcoin BTC, due to the issue of slow transaction speeds, many crypto developers look for an alternate solution to overcome the issue. And ETH users know transaction speeds could be accelerated by adding gas to motivate miners. And this is considered to be one good move at times of high network congestion. Also, gas fees begin to rise with no limit across 2021. And on May 19, 2021, one crypto enthusiast paid 702.94 as gas fee for a 35,633.05 sushi swap transaction. And also, too, personally, I mean, I've had a, um, I believe it was like a $26 random left over on one of my Ethereum accounts, and I went to just move it back to the exchange to try and uh, swap that out for a different asset, and it was more than double the price. So I just pretty much just left it in that wall and going to basically forget about it maybe in the future if the transaction fees go down i can swap it out then and also too getting into this conversation i think that i think that if like bitcoin and ethereum didn't have the the free pass i don't think the market share would be so high into those two assets so i think once we have this regulatory clarity and i think that's what the fight is so hard into Ripple and XRP, but I believe once that becomes more neutral, then assets like XRP, XLM, XDC, and VET will begin to really launch in a pretty massive way as we begin to start seeing more of a level playing field within the um, volumes of the different assets out there because we know that the green, we know that the fast, we know that the low fees and the low energy consumption assets are exactly what the focus is becoming for 2021. All right, guys, remember, this is not financial advice. It's for entertainment purposes only. And as always, I want to leave you with a final thought. Do not give your past the power to define your future. And I want to say thanks and much love to our VIP on Patreon, Surf Meister, and to each and every one of you. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, and we will catch you in the next one.